we're going to talk today about uh, running geo-based experiments and not every marketer has run one already. And that was part of our motivation to simplify, standardize and automate the process of running geo experiments. Another motivation was these work well across every ad platform. We want to standardize and use the same recipe. And that's actually what's missing for marketers today. Uh, you don't want to run one experiment design that's maybe designed by Facebook for that test and a totally different methodology for Google. So one size fits all by design. And it, you know, where would we be running a test? We're going to run one today. Our examples in, in, in Google Shopping, specifically in Pmax, but the motivation from that could come from Lift Lab. We may raise our hand and say, here's an area that you should consider testing, or it may come from, you know, our customer or their executive team. Hey, this is a channel that we've always struggled to quantify. Could you start over here? This is kind of the welcome scream of Lift Lab. And today we're actually going to focus on one particular place, which is the experiment designer, so that we can show how to run a geo lift test. Uh, when you go over to the experiment designer, your first question is, uh, by default, you'll be running a go dark with pacing test. And that's exactly what we're briefing uh, on today. The other alternative is a spin level test. There, those tests are reserved for uh, very large channels where the capability or the appetite to go dark and not spend is not inside the comfort zone of the client. And so those are spin level tests where you'll spin down and spend up and spend BAU concurrently. And we'll extrapolate out to what's the case where we don't spend at all. Most examples, we are going to go dark. Uh, and those are going to all be geo-based experiments. As we go into this go dark test, we uh, we'll have to give uh, the experiment a name. Uh, we get to decide one or more business outcomes. And these business outcomes line up with data that uh, was going to be observed, what happened in the areas where we're not spending, uh, what happened anyway. And oh, common ones we might see people analyze are what happened to the site when we took away ads, what happened to the uh, retail or offline sales uh, when we took away ads. We might even want to zoom in um, specific customer acquisition activity. Did you know? It, maybe we're running a top of funnel uh, media test and we want to know what happened to acquisition. And then what are the product categories? Most commonly, we're going to use the all product category. And we'll go ahead and move along. Now we're going to be asked where in the media plan are we going to run this test? And I thought in this example, maybe we'd look at some of the shopping. And so we'll look at Google Shopping. And inside of that, um, inside of that uh, channel, we have multiple tactics. And so this test could be on some of the more traditional tactics. Maybe it'd be more appropriate to say what's going to be happening in our performance max. So let's go ahead and set this up as a performance max uh, test. And what we're going to be asked now is, what are the matched market pairs? What, what's the area of the country we're going to run this test? Now, we happen to have uh, some of these pairs available uh, in the account, and we can choose one for the test. We're going to go ahead and pick this one. This is treated versus control. We can see the area of the country where this is going to go live. Uh, we can also see it um, as, a, as a list. And these lists are downloadable. Uh, but let's go ahead and take this one. And we're seeing that the, the geos that we're using uh, fall into these cells. Uh, we're, not, we're not going to serve ads in about 16% of the country. So in this particular example, that's the holdout group. Um, and that means we're going to continue to serve ads in a similar group to the control group. An outlier group where, you know, these are set aside, but we're going to keep serving ads as we would have. And some of the country that won't be analyzed. Um, by default, we have it checked to say, let's let Lift Lab write these geos into the campaigns that we selected uh, over API. So we're going to let Lift Lab do that. Um, the other part of Go Dark with Pacing is the pacing section. And here we need to choose one of the templates of what will the pacing look like. And we're not uh, going into detail on how the pacing in Lift Lab works, but I will share today that uh, the rule of thumb is we're going to have an equal number of spend up days as we are spend down days, right? So we're going to net out uh, to the same budget. Uh, we can see this as a percentage or, or the raw spend, and we can edit this, uh, we can edit this uh, template if we need to. If there's certain days that we're set to be spend up and we want to swap them to spend BAU or spend down, we can kind of do that editing here. And that kind of gets us close to the uh, to the to to bringing this home. We're going to be presented with a summary of all of the decisions that we made. And if we click on this schedule experiment button, many, many writes are going to happen, right? We're going to start writing into the Google ad account, uh, all of the exclusions. And on a daily basis, we're going to be evaluating, do we need to make changes to the pacing? That pacing could be uh, changes in order so that spend will be changed mildly and the actual intervention might happen on the budget uh, or on the T-ROAS, uh, but it'll net back out to the same budget. 
So yeah, we're not going to schedule this experiment today. Uh, that'll be for some other time uh, when we are ready to go live. This takes us through in kind of short order all of the steps required and shows the level of automation that's been already uh, tackled on the behalf of LiftLab customers that want to run automated experiments.